Hey, Clay to 101. Um, so I wanted to get into Star Trek Online. I'm a huge fan of Star Trek. I loved it for a long time. And, yeah, I mean, this is a really great game. I love it a lot. It's, it's online. You know, you can get with your friends and go on really cool adventures. So I have several um, characters. This is my main one. This is Eldon. You know, made up character, <laughs> but uh, he he's basically the maximum rank, rank 60. I still have a long ways to go to arm the ships and all that. There's still probably way better weapons and stuff of that nature that I can get into to be more competitive PvP wise, but with that being said, let's check out the other characters. Here's my Klingon character. He's not actually a Klingon, he's actually a, a unique race that I made up. There's my Romulan character. And my classic Star, Star Trek character. Like based around Kirk's... T well, that's when he was born, but you know. I don't want to spell it too much, but... It's my classic Star, Star Trek character. And so yeah, there's that. So we'll just hop right into it. Like another game on my playlist or my channel, I don't know if I've played this for I haven't played this for a good while, so get a feel of it real quick. I believe this is a cruiser type ship, the best there is. I can still probably do better in terms of weapons, but you know, it gets really complicated with that stuff if you don't want to actually invest money, so it is what it is. So what's my directives right now? Well. Go to Kabali Prime. Is there anything else I can do real quick just to kind of show off my combat prowess? Doesn't seem like it. Uh. All right. Yeah, we'll just go with the objective then. I think this is actually a class above the, you know, Galaxy class, you know, from the, the next generation, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That's what rank 60 will do. It actually doesn't take that long to get to the maximum rank. After that, it's just actually arming yourself adequately and getting really good weapons. I've seen, like, people take out, like, a boar cube with, like, minimal effort so still probably have a long way to go in that regard but am I still a... oh I'm still I'm still in the fleet I haven't been on in a while I figured they might have booted me or something melting pot. Enter. Let's do it. Hopefully there's going to be combat. That would be great. There we go. Welcome to the Drenur system. Construction Why, you. of the colony is underway and on schedule. We're lucky we would have missed this system if the crew of our survey ship hadn't taken a closer look at the anomaly here. 
And you. I'm glad you and your crew were available to assist us. As you can see, the anomaly orbits both the planet and its moon, and appears to be stable. It's also very disruptive to long-range sensors. The USS Challenger's team has been very helpful. They've installed several planetary defense systems and provided modular building units for use at the colony site. Captain the Forge is standing by on the Challenger. Let's not keep him waiting. All right, let's do it. Good to see you. I hope the Grand Nur Anomaly didn't give you too much trouble getting here. We've been working with the Kentari and the Lucari to study. We know it's some sort of subspace disruption, similar to what Starfleet has seen in the Delta Triangle. Interesting. Not only does it cause sensors to behave erratically, but it seems to create a limited sort of cloaking field, both for the planet and the moon. Captain Fumarque and I have been collecting data on the anomaly, but we could use some more. Mind lending us a hand before we head down to the colony? Of course. Let's begin with a system scan. I've seen some strange data at that level. Same here. It'll be good to get some more eyes on this. sensors inside the anomaly. It might cut down on the interference. Very well. I've indicated an ideal area. Let's try again there. Sounds good. We're making progress, but I can't completely filter the sensor noise. Let's study those asteroids. There could be clues in how the anomaly affects them. All right. Not combat, but... <laughs> Out, fellas. Looks like the emitter relays are offline. We'll need to realign. Why aren't we fighting? Why aren't we fighting? fight people via ship to ship <laughs> oh well I'm eager to show you the progress we've made here 
done a lot in a short period of time, and I think you'll be impressed. Ready to beam down and see what we've been working on? Sure. <clears throat> Alright, let's check out this colony they got going on. Welcome to the Gulf. Kumarke was just telling me a bit about some recent energy tech improvements. Let's take a look around. As an engineer, I'm impressed by the technology that our partners brought to this project. Working with it has been a rewarding experience for all of us. Yeah, it's my weapon. I'm not going to do any harm, don't worry. <laughs> no, holster. There we go. Welcome. I'm Kajima, one of the industrial designers. Our colony may be fairly new, but we've already accomplished a great deal. I hope you find our work here interesting. We're trying to build an industrial infrastructure while respecting Lucari design recommendations. It's, uh, let's say, challenging. For instance, they've included considerable xenoscaping. They're committed to incorporating native plant life into the design spaces. It takes considerable effort, but it does mean that our structures are less susceptible to invasive problems with local plant life. Hold on one second. Alright. Aesthetic as well as functional. We'll keep an eye out for it. Cool. Dranur is quite the hidden paradise, don't you think? We only needed a minimum level of terraforming here. Well, cool. The fusion of Lucari and Kintari technology has been very effective. Our integrated tech output continues to impress. This display will confirm that. As you can see, our energy grid uses an array of natural power sources. This is the first of many hydropower sites on Dren. Why am I doing Beautiful, this? Isn't it? <laughs> oh well. Quite a sight, isn't it? I'm surveying the output as part of setting up hydropower here. I'd eyeball this at a base of three kilowatts, which doesn't seem like much until you consider that there are falls like this all over the coast. They seem to be active year-round. Now the challenge will be to capture that energy without disrupting the ecosystem. My lungs were damaged by toxic gases on New Kentar. It's made me more conscious of the need to regulate the pollution that we generate. And more appreciative of what we have here. I'd eyeball this at a base of three kill. Come upstairs. There's an excellent view of the colony grounds. Oops. Ah, uh, dang it, wrong way. It's another one of my rifles, or weapons, by the way. 
I usually use this one though. 